This video will cover usage and troubleshooting for the rigid 6.5 inch compact framing saws, the rigid 7.25 inch circular saws, and the rigid 7.25 inch worm drive saw. This video is not designed to replace your product's operator's manual. This video is here as a guide to offer clarification to key features on your tool. Always read, understand, and follow the warnings and instructions outlined in your product's operator's manual prior to use. You can also contact Rigid Customer Service for further product information. If you do not have a copy of your product's operator's manual, call Rigid Customer Service at 866-539-1710 or visit rigid.com to obtain one before you use your product. First, we want to stress to use the right tool for the right job. The 7 and a quarter inch saw will be used for the majority of jobs. The worm drive saw can bevel at a 51.5 degree capacity. Do not use dull or damaged blades, and always use blades with the correct size and shape of arbor holes to prevent loss of control. Make a small test cut before attempting any large rip or plunge cuts. To remove the blade, First, remove the battery or unplug the saw. Depress and hold the spindle lock, located near the upper guard, and remove the blade screw by turning the blade wrench counterclockwise while keeping the spindle lock button depressed. Remove spring washer and then outer blade D washer. Lift the lower blade guard and remove the old blade. Wipe a drop of oil onto the inner flange bushing and outer blade D washer where they contact the blade. If the inner flange bushing has been removed, replace it before placing the blade on the spindle. Fit the saw blade inside the lower blade guard and onto the spindle. Be sure the arrow on the saw blade and arrow on the upper guard are pointed in the same direction. Replace outer blade D washer and spring washer with the cupped side against D washer. Depress the spindle lock and replace the blade screw. Tighten screw by turning clockwise with the blade wrench and then store the wrench on the tool. To adjust the height, pull depth lock lever upward to release. Pull back the blade guard and push the saw base down so only about a quarter inch of a tooth is showing below the material you are cutting. To adjust the bevel, loosen the bevel lock knob. Move the base to your desired bevel angle using the onboard scale and push the depth lock lever down to secure it. Let the saw do the work. Do not force the saw through the material. If the switch is not working properly, immediately stop using the saw until it is repaired. All rigid saws are recommended for wood products only. Never use abrasive cutoff wheels with any saws. It can cause damage to your tool, and could cause serious personal injury to the user. The rigid circular saws are only designed to make three types of cuts, cross cuts, bevel cuts, and plunge cuts. Please refer to your operator's manual for instructions on how to make these cuts. If you are not getting the best possible cut, first check your blade. If the blade is bent, dull, or improperly set, this can cause your saw to not cut as clean or efficiently and create kickback. If there are any misaligned parts, like the base is bent or the blade is not cutting straight at the zero setting, please call Rigid Customer Service. This will ensure that only identical manufacturer parts will be used. If at any time the lower blade guard does not snap closed, unplug the saw or remove the battery and then exercise the lower guard by moving it rapidly back and forth from the full open position to the closed position several times. If this does not correct the lower blade guard action, please call Rigid Customer Service. 
Be sure to clean your tool after every use with a blower or a rag. Make sure the tool is unplugged or the battery is removed before you do this. Keeping your tools clean will extend the life of the tool. The worm drive saw will require oil in order to function properly. To check the oil level, use the provided hex wrench to unscrew the oil cap. Let the saw sit flat on a table for two minutes. Then insert the provided dipstick all the way into the oil reservoir. Pull the dipstick out. The oil level should read between the two white lines. If the oil is below the lower line, you will need to add additional oil. Use the hex wrench to screw the cap back on.